And on this fine spring day, we're going to talk about tech, tech of the old world. And today's video is brought to you by me and kind supporters via Patreon and PayPal. I want to thank you all and welcome. Now, today, somebody sent me a nice link, and this relates to the free energy fireplaces that we see in the past. Of course, the mainstream doesn't tell us they're free energy fireplaces, but I think it's pretty clear that they weren't regular fireplaces. And this video, or segment, brings me back to the research and video I did about Galen Windsor, who was said to have discovered radiation. At least the first radioactive power plants. He was so early in the game and worked for the government and would just handle the material with his bare hands. Years later they create regulations which he opposed. He was said to swim in the reactor ponds, even drink the radioactive water. And his story is readily available on the internet and YouTube, his account. And it's completely opposite of what we've been told about this material. And as we're finding in this historical research, so much has been buried, including all the modes of transportation, the antiquitec found on the tops of all old buildings, which was explained very well by the Russian scientists long ago. The principles of harnessing electricity from the ether. No moving parts required, only perfect symmetry and purity of metals. And this energy is just a byproduct all around us. Nikola Tesla spoke of this and utilized it. Whether he was replicating past technologies or not, we typically give him credit. And even today, a hundred years later, these technologies are still not understood and for the most part Tesla has not been left in the most favorable light whereas Edison gets most of the credit for the world we live in today and really all of this seems to be reverse engineered tech and ultimately bastardized and sold to us and made cheap and inefficient and electricity is just one small aspect of this. I say it over and over, but electricity is not that important. But what is important is this energy. And today we have energy flowing all around us. And it's malevolent, harmful signals pass through the airwaves, bombarding us in all directions. We even carry devices on our person, emitting these negative energies and ultimately masking the abundant and natural healing energy sometimes called prana sometimes called chi and perhaps the most important usage of this energy is for one's own well-being absorbing it and this being the point of many eastern exercises such as yoga and qigong and tai chi we ultimately being the tech, a living and breathing technology. And in ancient Chinese texts, we're told man used to survive completely on this chi and slowly lost this ability when he began consuming food. And I believe this is probably related to Wilhelm Reich, who also learned to harness and redirect the flow of this energy which I believe he called Orgon. And I think the old world understood this and built their buildings and structures and cathedrals, which were not actually for religious purposes for this reason. Just showering the residents with an abundance of this energy and well-being. And isn't that really what every creature wants? And back to this share, we can have a look at StolenHistory.org, 
or what's left of it. Very upsetting. Over 75% of these pictures are missing, but we still have a little husk of this original post. So I thought while it's still here, we'll have a look. So here the post is titled, 19th Century Radium Heating Systems. And here we see a depiction of a 19th century vision of the year 2000. And this seems to come out of France. And here's what they imagined the future to look like. And really, to us, everything kind of looks the same. And even their fireplace looks exactly like it would in the early 1900s. At least from the pictures we see. The difference is, is that they're actually using it like it was intended. And when people initially arrived and inherited this realm, they had no idea how to fire up these babies. And they stuffed wood in them and had fires, which were very inefficient at heating these massive homes and buildings. And if you've ever had a fireplace, you know. Especially if you're surviving and using it as your exclusive heat source. What a pain in the ass it is. All day and night, going in, going out, cutting wood, cleaning the mess. And this is very telling. Let's save this picture. That in a hundred years, their vision was that they would figure out how to use the things surrounding them. And as we know now, they didn't. We did. And we're still not employing it. I would love to have such a thing. And I did make a past video, I believe based on this original thread or a part of it, showing how these may have conducted free energy. And ultimately, the home and this free energy fireplace and the chimney and all the metal antiquitech that most would consider ornamentation were actually acting and serving to conduct this free energy. But this free energy is subtle and can be beneficial only in conjunction with other parts and we don't have the whole puzzle. I can relate it to solar power which I do use and have for years and we would need some kind of batteries to store this electricity. And some have hypothesized that all of the underground buildings had large pools of water that could have been acting as a battery similar to a Leyden jar or even the well-known Baghdad battery. But today, in this particular thread they're proposing a new energy source, which again brought me back to Galen Windsor and his early work and revelations about radiation. And here in a 1903 book called The Independent, Volume 55, we see them talking about a new source of energy. And in summary, the mystery of radium remains unsolved and no one has yet been able to ascertain where it gets the energy which it continuously radiates as heat. Light and rays of such astonishing, penetrating power. When King Edward and Queen Alexandria visited the London Hospital recently, a pile of six pennies was placed on top of a minute piece of radium, and the light was visible through the coins. So here, radium. And again, perhaps the radium would receive a small, small charge from the Antiquitech, producing a second form of free energy, working in conjunction. And this is absolutely amazing, because I was just in this town, and I have seen this fort, with many, what seemed like, older blocks. And then they had these little fort cabins made of wood. And I had been inside, and I wasn't impressed with the old westy wood forts when we had beautiful stone ruins all around it. And that's what I was looking at. But nevertheless, this guy went in here and got a picture of a fireplace. It's called Fort Bluff. And what he noticed is this radiation symbol on the fireplace, as we see down here, in comparison to the symbol we all know so well. And I have seen a lot of 
fireplaces, but this one really does seem like it's not made for wood. And initially this is a little window, which is handy with every fireplace. And he suggests that the stovepipe is a much later addition. And I agree. And typically any stovepipe is not made by the same manufacturer. But when looking at this thing, I think he makes a really good point. Unbelievable. And again, if I wasn't aware of the work of Galen Windsor, I would think that this was nuts. As most people do. Still thinking this is a really dangerous element. And I don't know what it is. Seeming like it could be a byproduct or something left over from the reset. But this past civilization, clearly understanding how to use it safely. And let me know what you think. Is this just a fluke? And he's telling us here that this symbol is not just used for radioactivity, but also a warning sign of just any ionizing radiation. As many non-radioactive sources also emit potentially dangerous levels of ionizing radiation, including particle accelerators. Very interesting. Here showing the true invention, so they say, of radium, discovered by Marie and Pierre Curie in 1898. They extracted the radium compound from uraninite. The radium was isolated in its metallic state through the electrolysis of radium chloride in 1911. Pure radium is a silvery white, but it reacts with nitrogen on exposure to air, forming a black surface layer. And this part is really fascinating. With the discovery of radium, the society went bananas and started sticking radium into just about everything. We're talking about soap, toothpaste, chocolate teas, coffee food, cigarettes, and bath salts. And this part, we're missing the images for. But here I found a little article showing this. So they were putting this into beauty products and people were soaking in it. And here we can see some radium infused cigarettes and perfumes. Very interesting. And then eventually, similar to one catastrophe that seems to put an end to something, possibly one false flag or staged event, we have these radium girls that were like models for these products and they were said to have died from their radiation exposure. As many as 4,000 workers were hired to paint radium dials. But they were also using this as a glow-in-the-dark product and many people were hired to paint. But here we see Mae Keen, one of the last radium girls, dies at age 107. So that's very interesting. She had a pretty lofty life, considering she was one of these models who would paint these products on themselves and even consume them. Again, similar to Galen Windsor. And again, very depressing that many of these pictures are missing. Here there were more heaters that were shown from the Novelty Manufacturing Company out of Jackson, Michigan. Their advertisement offered something much better than the old coal fireplace. It was called the X-Radium Heater, the best and latest heating technology. The advertisement boasted that one of its chief advantages is the fact that it re requires no fuel. The heating pad consists of a stamped steel receptacle filled with a substance which will attract itself heat rays and retain the heat extracted for several hours. The substance they used was radium. And this is really interesting. It looks like the Nuclear Regulatory Commission sent these people a letter and they're gonna put an end to this company. And here's a heater, but this one is an oil heater, apparently made by this novelty manufacturing company. So we can see it's very techy, clearly old world, and what a fascinating oil heater. 
I would love to have this. Look at that thing. So it's not an oil lamp. It's an oil heater. It's freestanding. No venting that I can see needed. Unbelievable. So yes, this majesty company was also a pr producer of a free energy radium heater. Toss a little chunk of radium in there and you're good to go. And again, this is not just something that you design overnight. This is well thought out and this company clearly knew what they were doing. Let's see if we can't find their heater. Here we go, I think. Fascinating. It looks like a waffle iron. And what a strange sight, making it seem like we can buy this product. And here another look at this radium infused pad to warm your feet with a beautiful carrying case and designed to be carried while still hot. Hence this little handle, similar to my stove latch. And here's a nice article published in 1904. The Heating Effects of the Rays from Radium by Rutherford and Barnes. And this is pretty mind-blowing. In a recent communication to this publication, Passion has described some experiments which indicate that the rays from radium supply a large proportion of the total heat emissions. It is known that the heating effect of radium when surrounded by an envelope of sufficient thickness to absorb the different rays is about 100 gram calories per hour per gram. This large heating effect of the rays was so unexpected that we decided to verify this result by an independent method. And I think I'll just conclude with some crazy thoughts. Of course, I really believe lately that giants built our realm, as everything such as the doors, instruments, weapons, buildings themselves are massive and seem to be built for and by a people much larger than us. And if everything was inherited and we seemingly arrive from the 1850s to early 1900s as inheritors, then there must have been no civil war. This is the condition that we found the place in. And I've made many videos discussing the falsities of the Civil War, and I won't get into that now. But if you can conceive of this when looking at the ruins seeming more like Hiroshima than that of cannon and cannonball destruction, then we next have to ask ourselves, what of slavery in the African American? And of course, this is just a theory, but we would have to conclude that they were already here. And we see evidence of this when we look at all the different Native American tribes that used to exist and not fitting the look and modern stereotype of what the Native American is supposed to look like. But again, not giants, but perhaps survivors of a past reset. And why don't we find any giant bones, one would say, if giants did build all the wonders that we see in the past? And I would say that we do. They are often rushed into the Smithsonian basement for safekeeping and seem to disappear, just like all the great discoveries. And today I want to propose that they're probably claiming that over 90% of these bones are from dinosaurs. And I think many of these finds are reconstructed into fictitious reptilious looking creatures when in fact they are the bones of giants and finally i just want to conclude with chi or this energy that we started off with this understanding coming from china japan and india at least in my understanding and as of today with an almost certainty i believe all this wisdom did not come from these people but rather came from the people before them and they've inherited all of this wisdom. And it is the greatest wisdom I have found for the well-being of humanity. Understanding how to absorb these subtle energies. And even in the Chinese histories, most of these books and their authors don't have names and were said to have just existed throughout their entire history. Such as the I Ching and other classics. And when we look at China, we see mummified 
Caucasian, red-haired people found all throughout. And the Chinese government has tried to cover this up. And it would seem clear that this region and wisdom was Tartarian and is disappearing quickly. So that's it for today. I thank you for joining me, and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And here's a little bonus. I want to show you an up-and-coming video where we'll discuss the ruins of the Civil War, the ruins of Hiroshima, and the ruins of San Francisco, and how they are all identical. Identical brick ruins, all said to have been affected by different events, one cannonball, one bomb, and one earthquake. And we'll also look at some comparisons of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, as seen here, with a very similar looking building in Chicago. And we'll go into more detail very soon. God bless.